I particularly enjoy drawing eyes and I haven't drawn one for a long time. So I thought it'd be fun today to show you the general process I go through when I draw an eye, but also show you some of the things to look out for when you're drawing eyes. So today I'll be drawing this with Prismacolor and I'll be doing it on Bristol board. I've put links in the description on all the materials I'll be using. If you'd like to draw this eye with me in real time, it is available on my Patreon, along with over 250 hours of other tutorials. Every video includes a detailed tutorial, reference photos, sketch outlines, and swatches of all of the colors I'll be using. And if you'd like to try one of these videos for free, it is available on my website. I've put links to both below. So let's get started. Now, generally when I'm drawing eyes, I like to break it down into sections. So I don't try and draw the whole thing all in one go. I start with one area at a time. So I'm going to begin here with the iris and the pupil. And I want to start by putting down some base layers. So I want to be putting down some sort of color to get me started. Now what I'm looking for is the absolute lightest color I can see in the reference. And actually in this eye, it was a bit different towards the bottom than towards the top. It was more of a blue towards the bottom and more of a gray towards the top. I also wanted to make sure I avoided there's a kind of window of light on the right hand side. So I didn't want to put down any of these colors in this area. From here, what I wanted to do was make a kind of template. So it was going to make my life a lot easier if I could map out the main shapes of the eye before I go into trying to add any sort of detail. The iris is made up of a number of kind of patches and within those patches, there's some kind of little lines. So I mapped out the patches with this color and then that made it far easier for me to kind of see what I was doing. I also use this blue to shade in the pupil. Although the pupil is going to be pretty much black, that black is going to pop a lot more where I put a blue underneath it than if I just put black down in the pupil area. So once I could see what I was doing a bit clearer, I could then start adding some detail. And actually, although what I was drawing here was a blue eye, blue eyes are kind of more of a cool gray than a blue. So I wanted to build up quite a deep cool gray, putting in all of the little flicks I could see within each of these patches. This left me with a very patchy looking eye that needed blending together. So I could add in a little bit of brown for the few brown flecks I could see. Also quite an earthy bluey green to just go over the top of most of the eye and it blended all of those lines together. It also took away a lot of the lighter areas of the paper so that it didn't look as harsh having these dark lines on such a light background. And then I could go back over the top of this new, more thoroughly blended, smoother base with a dark gray again, a darker gray than earlier, just going back over all of these darker areas to help them pop. But it was far easier second time round because I had such a clear template that I really just needed to go over the top of it. And then once I had added all of that in, the eye was looking much more realistic. I wanted to add in a tiny bit of black. So a little bit of black over the pupil and the very odd little fleck of particularly dark areas just to help them pop a bit more. And then the last thing I wanted to add on the iris was a little bit of quite a bright blue, just very, very lightly, just to brighten up a few areas of the iris. Then from here, I wanted to move on to my next section which is the white of the eyes. Now, the important thing to remember about the whites of eyes is that they're not actually white. They're generally more of a cool gray. And actually in the case of this eye here, it is a cool gray on the right hand side, but on the left, particularly as I get close to the tear duct, it gets extremely dark, pretty much black because it's in such a deep shadow on this side. And if I was to just leave them white, it wouldn't look realistic. Similar to what I did with the iris, I wanted to start off by putting down some base layers. So I started off with the lightest cool gray and just put down a nice and smooth base. I covered the whole area on the right hand side and just the strip closest to the iris on the left hand side because as I say, this left hand side does get a lot darker, but it also goes very pink. So I want to be putting down a base in this area with a very light pink. 
Now, on the most part, the white of the eye is quite smooth, but on this eye, I can see a few veins, particularly on this left-hand side. So I wanted to use a slightly deeper pink to draw those in. And then I wanted to gradually work my way up through the colors towards some of the darker colors. So I really just wanted to, similar as what I did with the iris, begin marking out where everything's going to go. And once I work my way up to quite a deep brown, I could then start tweaking the colors and adding some detail. So I wanted to add in a little bit of a kind of reddish brown just to warm up and deepen down this dark patch on the left. And then I could add in quite a vibrant pink so that I could brighten up this left hand side as well. After deepening down the shadows again, I was having a look at which colors I think were missing. And actually, there's quite a lot of purple, quite a light purple within the white of the eye, particularly on this eye. And my general rule is if I can see it, I will draw it. So I added a very light layer of purple. It was particularly around the edge of the iris. And that's gonna help add a bit more depth to this area. Now, one of the main things that I see people doing wrong when they draw eyes is around the edge of the iris between that and the white of the eye. They leave it as a really hard line. When in actuality, the line between these two areas is quite soft. It fades very smoothly from one area to another. So I just wanted to go around the edge of the iris, just add a bit of shading around here so that it doesn't look quite as harsh. And then I could start building up some of the cooler greys on the right hand side. So adding in a couple of the little veins on this side as well. They look more grey on this side. And also putting some darker grey around the edge of the white of the eye because that's going to help the eye look more rounded. So from here I just went through and built up exactly the same colours as I'd been using up until now. Just building them up bit by bit so that I could see a bit clearer where else the colours need adding. From here I carried on working through those same colours bit by bit. And once I was happy with the white of the eye I then wanted to move on to drawing the skin. I once again wanted to start off with the lightest colours and putting down some base layers. And I actually mixed two colours together to do this because I couldn't find the exact colour I was looking for as standard in my set. Once I've added that in, I then wanted to use quite a light peach colour to start marking out where all of the lights and darks are going to go. Now I did find this lady skin quite tricky because it's so very fair and particularly on the right hand side where it's much lighter, it was so light I found that quite hard to draw. It's easier to draw skin I find where it's got more shadows. But starting off with this peach did help me map everything out and made it a bit clearer in my mind what needs to go where. I then wanted to work my way up through the colours similar to what I have been doing up until now. Starting from a quite a kind of reddish brown moving to a more mid-tone brown before I could then start marking in the darker shadows, particularly on the top of the eyelid and underneath the eye with a darker brown. Now while drawing the skin, I did use the same purple that I used on the white of the eye. Generally speaking, particularly around the bottom of the eye, you will find a lot of purple, blue and a cooler gray. Because the skin under the eye is so thin, it means you can see some of the veins kind of very subtly coming through. So I could build up a little bit of purple under here and then I could brighten it up by adding quite a vibrant pink. Again, this is the same pink that I used on the white of the eye. I do find where possible, if I try and use the same colors in one area of the drawing as I used in a previous area, it helps tie the whole thing together. And whilst I'm thinking about using some colours that you wouldn't necessarily think are in skin, I also wanted to add a little bit of yellow, particularly around the outside of her eye. It had more of a yellow tone in the reference. And again, if I can see it, then I will draw it. Once I built up a decent amount of base layers, I then wanted to brighten everything up and blend a lot of these areas together. So I actually went back to the colours I used at the very beginning for the base layers and went back over most of the skin using more of a medium pressure. So up until now, I'd been exclusively using a light pressure. 
I wanted to begin pressing a little bit firmer to blend everything together. And doing that made it far clearer to see where I needed a bit more color building up. So particularly underneath her eye and on her top eyelid. Now at this point, it looks a little bit peculiar because she's got no eyelashes and she's got no eyebrow hairs. It gets a little bit tricky to see where else needs other colors adding. So although it looked a little bit odd right now and a little bit patchy, I wanted to add in the eyelashes and eyebrow hairs before I did anything else to the skin. And then at the end, once I'd done that, I could then adjust any final areas. Now this lady's eyelashes had sort of sorted themselves into clumps, which did make it a lot easier to draw. Now she's wearing mascara, so her eyelashes actually looked pretty much black, but I didn't want to start off with the black, I wanted to map everything out with a slightly lighter colour, because if I made a mistake it would make it easier to fix. So I used a pretty dark brown, but very lightly and just try to draw in the shapes I could see of the eyelashes. So notice that the eyelashes towards the left lean out and towards the left, whereas the eyelashes towards the right bend the other way. And it's exactly the same on the bottom eyelashes. The only difference is they're a little bit thinner, a bit more sparse, so I didn't need to make such thick groupings of lashes. So although this looks a little bit too light at the moment, I can add to this a bit later. I went about drawing in the eyebrows in a very similar way. So I just wanted to map out with a light color where all of these hairs were going to go, particularly looking at the direction of the hairs. So towards the left hand side, they're pointing pretty much up straight and they're really quite sparse. Whereas as I get more towards the right hand side, the hairs start pointing towards the right and get much denser. The most important thing to do here is have a nice sharp pencil. You'll end up with really thick strokes for the hairs and that won't look natural. So once I'd mapped all of this in, I could then go back over the eyelashes with the black and really start looking at the details of all of the hairs. And as I went on to the bottom lashes, I did want to use a little bit of the black but much less. I wanted to, on the most part, use more of a dark brown. So the same dark brown as I mapped them out with, but I just tweaked everything and pressed a little bit firmer to mark that in. For the eyebrow, I approached this in a kind of similar way to the bottom lashes. So I wanted to go back over the eyebrow hairs with the same color. I didn't want these to be as dark because her eyebrows were more of a dark brown. And then once I'd gone back over all of those hairs in a more detailed and thorough way, I then wanted to use a lighter brown to add in some of the smaller eyebrow hairs around the edge. Now once I'd marked in these lashes and eyebrow hairs, it's then a bit easier to see what else needs tweaking on the skin. And the main thing I wanted to add was a bit more vibrancy underneath her eye. So adding some more cool grey and a lot more purple and a bright pink. And then that was it. So that is the general process I go through when I'm drawing an eye. Don't forget, if you'd like to do this with me in real time, it is available on my Patreon. And as always, if you found this video helpful, give it a like. Don't forget to click the subscribe and the notify bell so you never miss an art tutorial. Happy drawing, guys. I'll see you in the next one.